So at the end of the last video, I gave out an assignment to watch a video by Bob Proctor on the subconscious mind. If you haven't done so yet, do so now. And then come back. Because we're going to build and expand upon the model that he has given. And everything that he's teaching in that video is going to give you a basic understanding and control of all your magic. Now refrain from being polarized and avoid dismissing Bob Proctor altogether just because he was in the secret. Which a lot of people equate to hogwash. And it is, at least in the way that they packaged it. Because there is no law of attraction in hermetics. The author just made it up by combining two of the hermetic principles, the law of vibration and the law of correspondence. The law of attraction is actually the hermetic law of polarity. But they only gave you half of that because it should have been the law of attraction and repulsion. See, because you can do both. But that wasn't even in the secret. It was all about visualizing what you want and... That, as I said before in the previous lesson, that's a feminine energy and is really not going to do much without that fiery, outgoing, dynamic male energy of the will. Visualization is important, but by itself it will get you nothing. So they only gave you one half of one hermetic principle, which wasn't even that hermetic principle. It was a combination of two others. Now, if you were missing those particular parts of those two others, then maybe your magic really took off. But for most people, it just didn't work out. Now, what Bob Proctor is talking about in the video I had you go watch is the law of gender and how it relates to the mind. Now, the Kabbalion states that no creation, physical, mental, or spiritual, is possible without this principle. You have to combine the male and feminine energies in order to create new life. That's just how it is. And if you're not doing that, well, then you're just the weirdo in the basement dressing in robes and playing with wands. <laughs> now, we're not going to get into astrology just yet, but if you really want to know what you should be doing in life, take a look at your chart and combine the male and feminine energies. Look at what house and sign your Venus and Mars are in and combine them. That'll tell you right there. See, you're not going to find that in any book. Nobody else is going to tell you that. <laughs> but see, it makes sense if you're following the Hermetic Principles. I mean, books are good to get a general idea of things at the beginning, but the best teacher you're ever going to have is always going to be your own intuitive spirit. But in order to be able to do that, you need to establish a reliable communication system between the two halves of your mind, the conscious and the subconscious, the two pillars, the polar opposites. Oh, it's all starting to come together now, isn't it? Being between the pillars, walking between the worlds. The sign of Gemini, the twins. It's the third sign, yet its symbol resembles the Roman numeral two. Well, it's not the Roman numeral two. It's the two pillars, the twins. And Gemini rules over communications. It's showing you right there the need to be able to communicate between the two halves of your mind. And by being balanced in the center, they now have an easier means of communication with each other. And you'll have a more difficult time ignoring one over the other. See, this is what it's about, people. Having the two sides work together for mutual benefit instead of them playing off against each other as polar opposites. And this is what Bob Proctor is showing in the video. How people's subconscious will always hold them back if it's at odds with the conscious mind. If the subconscious can only accept and doesn't have the ability to reject anything, then why do we need the will to impress upon it at all? And the answer is the problem isn't with the subconscious. It's with the conscious mind. The conscious mind is the filter. And it's not the things that you consciously catch that you need to be concerned about. It's the things that you don't catch that slip through the filter and get into the subconscious mind that you need to be concerned with. Such as skimming through articles and not really reading them or not paying attention to what's being said on the radio or TV 
Those are the ones you have to be concerned with. And the music you listen to is even more potent because the lyrics are combined with an emotional charge, that emotional charge being the music itself. See, the music can actually make you feel happy or it can make you feel sad. If it's aggressive, it can make you even feel angry. And so it carries an emotional charge. And then they take those songs and they play them over and over and over again on the radio. And then you get them stuck in your head. And you're playing them over and over and over in your mind. Sometimes not even wanting to. I can't get this song out of my head. And the lyrics and the music combine to create that blueprint to make an impression upon the subconscious mind. That's magic. That's the hermetic principles in action right there. And you can argue that, well, music doesn't make people the way they are, but that's a chicken and egg argument. Whether you were a gangbanger before or after you listened to gangster rap doesn't matter because the music that you enjoy and listen to is always going to be in harmony and correspondence with what you have in your mind. And they reinforce one another. Now you're not going to find very many metalheads being caught dead listening to Justin Bieber. Just ain't going to happen. That's polarity. But as Bob Proctor's showing, if you want to change your results, you need to change what's in your mind until you're in harmony with it. And at first, you're not going to be. The mind will quite literally rebel on you. And as the saying goes, it gets worse before it gets better. And I'm not saying go listen to Justin Bieber. Please don't do that. <laughs> what I am saying is that you really need to pay attention to the lyrics and the music. I mean, if you're angry all the time and you're listening to angry music, well, you're just reinforcing that, are you not? If you're always sad and you're listening to sad, sappy songs, well, maybe it's time for a change. And don't discount the lyrics because there's a lot of things slipping in that way too. you got to really pay attention to what songs are putting into your head. I mean, this is so simple, it should be obvious, but yet it's lost on the majority of people. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, you know, belief isn't required. At least your conscious belief isn't. You know, it only matters what the subconscious believes. Because that's what's going to give you your results. I mean, if you're happy with everything in your life, then great. You don't need to do anything. But if you're miserable, well, the only way you're going to be able to change that is to stop harmonizing with and totally dissociate from all the miserable things that you're putting into your mind. And stop bitching about it because that just totally reinforces it. It's a feedback loop. Alex Jones, you know, he, I pick on him a lot, but he's an angry dude. And most of his followers are angry too. They're angry at the New World Order. Well, just go to his website. On any given day, it don't matter what day it is. Read the headlines and the articles on, on the front page there. Just, you know, a handful of them. Do they make you feel happy? Or do they really piss you off? Well, they're designed to piss you off. To polarize you. See, I don't need to be angry to resist the New World Order. Nobody has to. All you gotta do is use their own words against them. I mean, if you're angry all the time, well, stop associating with things that make you angry. I mean, unless you like being angry. I personally do not like being angry, so I stopped listening to Alex Jones' radio show and stopped visiting his website. So it's the things that the conscious mind aren't catching that slip past the filter. And that's what subliminal messaging does. It has to sneak in under the radar. If you catch it, it doesn't work. It has to get underneath the conscious mind for it to work. And this is why in magic, in order for you to consciously impress something upon your subconscious, you need the will. Because the conscious mind, in relation to the law of gender, acts as a bit of a cock block. <laughs> your own conscious mind will end up getting in the way. And it looks like I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to have to make a part two. And I'll explain this a little further on. See you then.